Okay, so I'm going to speak a bit about some things I've been doing the last year and uh, I decided to make it into kind of one presentation because they are kind of related. And uh, what I've been doing is working with uh, Muscle, which is, which is a pretty new C library and uh, and uh, getting SMD Linux working. Oh. So first a little bit about Muscle. So it's a C standard library developed by Rich Falker. And it's like targeted for Linux, Linux specific and uh, <coughs> Quoted from their website is Muscle is a lightweight, fast, simple, free, uh, and strives to be correct in the sense of standards, conformance, and safety. So they are kind of they don't put stuff in there to be, for example, G libc compatible if it doesn't like really make sense. They they leave out that kind of stuff that isn't standard stuff. In. Sorry? Which C standard? I believe you is asking. Which C standard? Uh, C or yeah, C I'm not an expert of C standards. <laughs> or, least, or like, not C standard, like the uh, POSIX standard more. Well, of course the C standard comes in there too, but I was more speaking about the... Or I, I think this more refers to the, to the POSIX standard. Mm -hmm. Multiple ones of the in the meantime as well. Sorry? Didn't we have multiple versions of that as well in the meantime? Yeah, there are multiple but I I, I don't know. Uh, what I have done is done an open risk port for it, so that's kind of my part of it. Uh, well okay, so why muscle? Well it's well maintained. So uh, usually lib C lib that's one <laughs> one thing that people are complaining about it is that they don't do releases and well it's maintained but they don't do releases uh, Muscle have kind of frequent re releases and it's well maintained people are working on it constantly and it's robust clean code it's a nice code base it's easy, well structured and well written and small. That's like, of course for embedded use we want it to be small. Uh, we have like a GLMC port in the works. Uh, it's working but yeah it's big so it's not suitable for everything. Uh, it's not configurable like usually you see how do you pronounce it? It's a micro oh, whatever. GLMC. <laughs> uh, you can configure that to your target, but this this doesn't have any configuration. It's like all in, but it's still small, so it's still suitable for embedded use, even though you get all the features in. Uh, and then, of course, GLibc has a lot of like legacy baggage, like stuff that is in there that they have to have there because people are expecting it to be there. Uh, must have thrown everything out, and there kind of approach to programs that doesn't work because it expects something from like that, that something <coughs> uh, works because glibc does it then their approach is change the program because it's doing it wrong kind of so uh, does it have a function named index sorry does it have a function named index function because that, that's sort of the testing stone if you're implementing projects 2001 of course, it's 2001 with a legacy package. Yeah, but uh, no, I meant more like the GLC stuff. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I really understood the question. There's a function or was a function, depending on the perspective, named index, like Sturgeon. Okay. Yeah. I. I don't know. So that's the first character in the string, that is a particular value. 
Yeah. I can't answer the question, so let's move on. Mm, yeah, it's a license is a permissive license, so so yeah, that that's pro or con, depending on who you ask. But I I like permissive licenses. So I think it's a pro. It doesn't appear to be suffering though, does it? Huh? Well, doesn't appear to have a lack of uh, contribution from the sounds of it. Yeah. And uh, well, what I have done is done an open risk or one K port to it, and it's upstream. So that's actually the first libc port that we have upstream. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot is thanks to to Rich. He's been like working very close with all those communities. I got an IRC channel, Dalias, his name and. Yeah, helped out a lot with the with the porting effort. So, like, I'm, I just typed the code. A lot of input from him. But, like, it was a lot of help. Uh, and uh, it requires a CPU implementation with uh, instruction support because, well, I didn't like. Usually, say it has been using a syscall where you you get atomic uh, at, atomics, but I didn't want to add that to that, and because it's a bit ugly and, and not, very <coughs> much, not very good. And since we had added the atomic uh, instructions, I wanted to use that and decided that that's exclusive what we're going to do. And the uh, problem is, of course, that you need an implementation that has this, but I'm working on updating Linux or like doing an emulation implementation in Linux that would use like do a legal instruction exception and then do the kind of the same thing that the old atomic Cisco does. It, this all, of course, only works in uniprocessor systems, not like SMT systems, but like a backward compatibility layer. And some things that are missing in our usually C, C port is support for trade local storage and P thread. <coughs> well, didn't have that. But that this this kind of this isn't anything I have <coughs> I have just done the the or one K parts of it, which is few lines of code of it. So but it's in there, there's support for it. So it, it's a pretty like it's a complete libc that is really usable for embedded for embedded use. That's like what's good about it. Moving on to Linux. <coughs> uh, yeah, after I had the, the, the libc port, then I and the other Stefan's work with the multi-core stuff, then the idea started out that we want to run Linux, SAP Linux. Uh, and there are a couple of things that you need, or was needed before we could even start, like, doing the Linux port, or the Linux parts port, or Linux kernel parts of it. And yeah, Atomic Instructions, I mentioned, and the C, C library that has support for it, so muscle now. Then you need an interrupt controller within the process uh, interrupt support. <coughs> because you need to be able to send messages between ports. And uh, yeah, that was, we, did, we didn't have that, so we had I had to make one of those, and well, it only has the uh, interprocess interrupt part done. But the idea would be to make like a interrupt controller port, so you can throw away the built-in uh, PIC controller inside and just use that. That would be like the idea. And you need a global accessible timer that is in sync for all the cores. The problem now is that each CPU have, has their own timer, and they are not going in sync. So when you read the timer in Linux, it, they don't agree what <laughs> what the time is. Uh, so I haven't done that. I have just done a free running timer, and then I sync the sync the internal timers to that. But that that has to be done. Um, 
Yeah, that snooping unit, Casper NC, that's like related to the to the multiplayer stuff, the more MR1KX and the scratch base that I spoke about earlier and this CPU ID that Stefan spoke about in his presentation too. You could also use the scratch uh, register for threat local storage because uh, at every uh, a thread switch you also have to then switch to the new context and as part of the uh, switch to the new context you could load the appropriate values in. Yeah, what they are they are used for now is to say the way a couple of registers so you can set up the kernel stack. That's basically what you're using. You could also use use like pin down a register in the GCC port or like in the compiler. But since we haven't done that, we decided to not change the ABI and, and do that. So that would be like another. But the problem with thread local storage is similar that you. One, one register. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we have one re register, like in, in the API, we have one register pinned down for that. R10. For thread local storage. Huh? For thread local yeah. storage. I don't think it's in the API. I think it's just de facto R9. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, so yeah. I think it's, it's not in the official. We, we haven't, it's not documented, but it is like. It's kind of de facto. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But yeah. We're using R10 for that, so that's pinned down, or like that's dedicated for that. And then we don't have any like kernel, kernel register pinned down. Yeah, so, and then the changes that I've done to the Linux board was a couple of things. Secondary CPU bring up, of course you have to like, just bring up the the CPU zero, like that one boots, and then it kind of brings up the rest of the CPUs, and they just keep waiting or like sleeping or whatever until until they are too tall to to start up. And then atomic operations, like atomic bidops, compare exchange, no more atomic <coughs> add and uh, and uh, few texts require some atomic operations as well. And then of course spin logs and uh, IP. Ticket spin logs, uh, <coughs> I'm not gonna go into what ticket spin logs are. Probably read up on that. Someone doesn't know what it is, but it's basically copied from ARM, like it's pretty pretty much just copy pasted from there and ordered to, to our instructions. And then the interprocessor interrupt support and the driver for the for the oh, interrupt controller core. So is that a block that sits outside the CPUs? Uh, it's just like the interrupt controller. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like an own core that is memory map, like the wish box. <coughs> do you think something like that could be added to the ISA, or do you think you just leave it? To no, the I think it should be outside. I think it. Yeah, we should instead remove the current pin from the ISA. Yeah, right. Yeah, I thought that's what you were saying before, but I didn't think quite actually. Cool. And uh, per CPU, okay. current of view to view. Okay. How do you bring up the second second CPU actually? It's an uh, exception or something? Uh, yeah, it's, well, no. Uh, so, the first CPU, it boots up, then all the other CPUs, they sit spinning and waiting for like, for a place in memory to be written to, and then when that has happened, they like. Okay, it's like a special code. Yeah, or, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, everything. Uh, yeah. The Linux kernel stuff that I'm working on, all this is kind of work in progress, so. So they are sitting in various repo, like kind of mine repositories or branches. So in the, yeah, in my Linux, Linux repo, there is a SMB branch where I have put all the SMB related stuff. And then, as I mentioned in the in the MR1KX status update, the multicore stuff hasn't been completely merged into master yet. So there's 
still sitting in, in its own. And then I have uh, this impact controller I have in, in a few SOC, ARM, SOC, uh, yeah, uh, SOC, like that sits on, on my GitHub page. I haven't put anything into the official one yet. And uh, yeah, then I thought I just quickly show that it's actually working. I wonder how I can increase this. Can I do that? Uh, not really. If you increase the font size, it will scale up. I don't quite know how to do that. It's like Alt and right click, or? Mm. Oops. Oh, it's it's the right main options full screen. Main option's full screen. It's Control not, so right click. See the top, very top option is full screen. Will that make it for you? No. Well, you get a big window, but not big text. Bigger text is when you use Control right, right. click and select huge. Ah, oh, there. Wait. Yeah, yeah that's that's huge. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small division of huge. Oh, that's huge. It's not that. Round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> then I, I thought that I should show something that actually some program I thought that actually makes use of of several CPUs and we have had a tradition of uh, running a bit retro stuff like from the 90s so I thought I'd do something related to that this year too so I wonder if this yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so nice. not from the 90s, it's Starfield demo. Well, this wasn't even in the 90s anything, any particular spectacular. So let's add some something more fun to it. <laughs> <laughs> but this runs really slow. So, well, in the 90s you probably would sit down and and uh, start like optimizing the. In assembler or something, but we are in 2004, so we just throw more hardware on it. And what I've done is, or what this is doing is, kind of running a fading thing on the whole screen. And I divided the screen into four sections, and each core is fading like one section. <laughs> 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 okay. So when you uh, 
when you put each core, is it an entire separate MRI? MRI yeah, yeah. There's no, nothing shared between them? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Like, separate. But if you throw in a like, second cache, that would of course be, could share that, but I haven't, I haven't added sure. that to the SOC. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Seth.